of Highland, Monster, and Hawaii in Lake County. I represent 180,000 people. Lake County consists of approximately 500,000 people. Um, in the year 2010, we did 16,000 cases of poor relief. My direct relief was $1,281,310. My indirect relief was $2,013,755,000. <coughs> Administration, we do, uh, we do, uh, we administer emergency assistance program, which is utility assistance for people, which is a state and federal program, and we also do HBR, which is federal stimulus dollars package that our county receives, which is a million dollars that I have dedicated full-time employees working on that is indirect assistance to people. Um, my budget in 2006 was $7,434,547. In 2010, it was $6,403,423, a reduction of 14%. I have 44 full-time employees. We have a golf course, so I have 16 seasonal employees. I have no cash on balance. That's not an issue with me. As far as nepotism goes, I do not have any family members that work for me, not a wife, not a cousin. Uh, the only one problem I had is my dad wanted to be a golf ranger, but then when I told him he couldn't have a horse, a badge, and a gun, he got upset. <laughs> so, so I wanted to be sure. um, as far as transparency, I'm glad that's been brought up. On my website, prior to the state of Indiana having their transparency, my, my annual report and budgets were placed on my website since 2007. Um, since I've taken office, we've focused on education and employment. We're trying to break the cycle of poverty. We've made people accountable, and we've made sure that when people receive assistance, they work it off. They also sign assistance contracts with us, personal uh, self-sufficiency contracts that work with our employment and education coordinators to make sure they get jobs. If we get them three jobs and we're in a very hard area in Lake County, and they don't, read, and they don't maintain those jobs and they lose them because of absentee, absenteeism, then they don't receive assistance for six months. If we get them into school and they, they get kicked out of school or they don't complete it, they don't receive assistance for six months. We also have a parental <coughs> contract. If you are a client of ours and you are a parent of school-aged children, you sign a contract for self-sufficiency saying that you will do three things. Your child won't get expelled, you'll go to parent-teacher conference, and you'll go to the mandatory parent-teacher conference for report card drop-offs. The reason why we're doing that is because if you're a citizen in my township, the least you can do is be an active parent. Um, the other issue that, and I'm, I'm mentioning all this and I'm going to make my point. Um, there was a flood in our area in Lake County. Over 3,500 homes were uh, affected. And uh, the township the township led the fight with the, poor, with the disaster relief. We worked with Ike Randolph from the state agency of the Faith-Based Initiative. He brought us in supplies. We were on people's doorsteps. Our staff mobilized and were on people's doorsteps during the flood. And what we heard was that this is the first time government was here to help me. I usually have to track down government. But we took the lead when there was a disaster. And the difference between what we did and what the state did was we provided goods. We provided flood buckets, food, clothing, bleach, what was necessary. The state provided in a one-stop shop that was set up, that we helped set up, that we worked with, Homeland Security and FEMA. They set up a shop where the Department of Insurance was there and uh, FSSA was giving out credit cards with cash on it, and you had a runoff. So the township performed more efficiently than the state government did in an emergency, and that's a fact. I also have a transportation system with six buses where we do on-demand buses and we do 14,000 rides a year. The reason why I mention that is Lake County is one of those counties, and you've discussed the RBA legislation. You've discussed we don't have a transportation system. The majority of my clients, if an obstacle comes up, they don't have a car. They can't get to a consolidated area. And then this is the most important thing. I have three points that I'm going to make very quickly that are most important to me that I want everyone to leave with. The accounting and the Red Cross, the way people do accounting. If my caseworker spends seven hours helping someone and we refer them to one of our social services, which is indirect relief, and we're not spending taxpayers' dollars, but yet we're assisting someone, my overhead still stays the same, but my administrative cost stays the same, but we're assisting other people with referral dollars, indirect help. American Red Cross has that type of accounting. 
But when you look and analyze the townships, there was a representative three years ago that put a dollar to his head and said, four dollars for every one dollar. I want to hold up an accounting book and say, do it fairly. Because you have to. Secondly, there is no, this is the other thing that you have to understand. There is no economy of scales in human services. And I was a pharmaceutical sales rep for six years. Every physician I sold my drug to wanted to know the outcomes data. Did the, did the patients live, die when they took the drug, and how long were they on the drug? You have an example of an experiment with the FSSA that failed. You do not, you cannot, with human services, there's no economy of scales. The more people you service, it doesn't get cheaper. It doesn't get cheaper. The economy of scale is human services needs human beings to be able to take the case, follow it through, have it. To be a steward of the tax dollars, you have to have a quality control system, you have to have investigators, and you have to know what's going on in your community. And the only, the only reserves I have about counties taking over poor relief is what is going to happen. My county is $15 million in debt. We haven't implemented a, a, a local option income tax. They're scrapping for dollars. It's a whole other issue, but the fact of the matter is they have the money. What's to say they're not going to raid that line item of poor relief and give it to public safety, or the criminal justice system, or the jail. There's no protections in that. There's no protections at all. So in essence, you could be eliminating poor relief, or diminishing it. And you have to consider that when you're doing these types of the elimination or abolishment of boards, um, and the townships. Uh, my closing argument is very, very clear. Um, I mentioned all the good things we do. Because, Chairman, I'm going to make this a little personal. I've done my research, and on your campaign website, you talked about the Speedway schools under reform, government reform. You said it's the best schools in the state of Indiana, and no one's going to change that. I feel that my township is one of the best townships in the state of Indiana. And your quote was, after all, the purpose of any reform is to save money, not cost, pay, not cost taxpayer dollars more. There are no guarantees that with this system, you will make it cheaper. The legislative services on all the bills consistently say, if it's more efficient or you can con contract services, then you will save money. The county's not clamoring to take over the responsibility, nor has it been proven that it will save money. So I want to be held to the same standards that you have on your campaign promise that after all, the purpose, after all, the purpose of any reform is to save money, not to cost taxpayer dollars. Obviously, uh, Mr. Mavan is going to go out from you.
So someone reviews you, it's not up to the person who's turned down to come in and file an appeal. I believe this bill suggested that if you deny me quarterly, I can make an appeal with the commissioner. Yes, let me, let me try and make this perfectly clear. That is true. We have, we, that exists now in our okay. county. You as a client who have came to get poor relief who was denied can appeal that, and you come before this hearing. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions for me? Representative Reskin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you, you, you answered a question for me. I know, because I know the area I represent really doesn't have um, a fair and a large uh, situation, popular situation like you do. And one of the observations I had is that I like that the township trustee at that intimate level knows where when somebody comes and asks for poor relief, if they're you know milking the system where they really do need poor relief. And I like the fact that, that decision is very local and most most of the time township trustees know the people in their in their township. But I didn't know if that could actually translate to a more popular situation. So you answered that question for me that yes, yes it does, yes it can. Uh, so I, I thank you, I thank you for that. Appreciate it. Okay, any other questions, observations from the committee? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Van, appreciate it very much.